Okay, on my clock it's 4.15. Um, I want to welcome uh, to this online meeting, uh, welcome to the members of the Standing Committee for Justice and Security of the Eerste Kamer, our Dutch Senate, and to Mrs. Claire Basie Mallory, uh, the President of the Venice Committee, of the Venice Commission of the Council of Europe. Uh, this is an online meeting which will be recorded and posted on the website of the Senate. And as an introduction, I can say on uh, May 31, uh, the members of the Committee for Justice and Security will hold a debate on the rule of law with the Dutch Minister of Justice and Security, our Minister of Legal Protection. Uh, and to prepare this debate, uh, we would like to talk with the Venice Commission about its report, the Netherlands, an opinion on the legal protection of citizens. Uh, the Venice Commission is the Council of Europe's advisory body on constitutional matters. And the Commission wrote a report on the request of the House of Representatives of the Netherlands, the Tweede Kamer, following the childcare allowance case, the Toeslagaffaire. And you, Mrs. Basis, Mrs. Basie Mallory, acted as one of the rapporteurs for this opinion. Um, the childcare allowance case has been analyzed by reference to the Venice Commission's report on the rule of law and the therein contained rules of law checklist guidelines. And this checklist lists a number of principles such as legality, including the existence of effective judicial review, legal certainty, legal safeguards against arbitrariness and the abuse of power and non-discrimination. And I would like to invite Mrs. Basie Mallory to elaborate on the findings of the Venice Commission in this opinion and to share her thoughts with the members of the Standing Committee for Justice. And after that, the members can ask their questions. Um, we ask you to prepare an introduction between five and ten minutes. Uh, and I want to give you the floor and once again, thank you for being with us. The floor is yours. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, I'm very pleased to be to be with you today uh, to discuss uh, this point, um, because uh, especially because I see it was quite um, new approach for for the Venice Commission itself. Uh, you know, generally when we're asked to to give an opinion uh, it's about text it's about procedure it's about something which is uh, uh, written and which uh, uh, has to do with the sort of reform and um, constitutional reforms and legislative reforms and so on in this case what was new for us is uh, is that it sounded uh, probably especially in my ears, because uh, uh, as you probably know, um, uh, reading my, my, my curriculum, I've been an auditor in the French audit court. So uh, it, it could sound like that, because in fact, we were uh, requested to, um, to give an opinion on something which was more the implementation of a public policy. Um, but um, uh, it was really very interesting because uh, it obliged us to um, go thorough in the mechanisms uh, that uh, that uh, um, permit the uh, the implementation of the rule of law, and to go profoundly in the uh, management and in the functioning of all the um, state authorities and powers to, to go and see what didn't work, why did it happen and why did it last so, so long. And in fact, it was exactly the question that were put to us in the letter. In the letter, it was what laws, what implementation, uh, what practices have contributed to what happened uh, after. And uh, so I, I insist it was quite a new work for us, sort of new work. And um, um, we, it was, um, um, 
as much difficult as was uh, the uh, novelty of uh, the Netherlands legislative constitutional and legislative le uh, or the legislation. Um, so um, it, um, it, the first question we had to, to deal with it was uh, what are the principles of the rule of law uh, that we have to go into to see how they were implemented and where uh, it wasn't working. And uh, you, you were talking, Madam, about legality. I mean, say that's probably legality, but more the quality of legislation, um, judicial security, and um, of all the mechanisms of, um, um, of control, survey, inquiries, and so on. Because everybody knows that uh, even if, if you have a perfect law, um, you have many, many uh, state, many states and uh, um, many levels uh, at the executive, legislative, and administrative uh, spheres that could um, make everything going badly and going wrong. So, um, first, uh, as I say, uh, we had to to go um, in the uh, in the in the law, and to understand uh, what were the the points where it could have um, it could have been a difficulty for everybody, and um, perhaps uh, I would say that we didn't discuss, of course, the choices that were made by the Netherlands about this allowance. Um, every model uh, is understandable. Uh, it is a political choice. And, uh, but of course, some choices could be more than others. Uh, the um, the, the uh, origin of difficulties. That's why probably the first thing we, 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 we noticed was that the um, allowance was built on a very complex mechanism with you know going go up and uh, up and down and going forth and so on because there were the families there were the the caretakers there was the the financial the, the ministry and then necessarily the uh, control of the fiscal situation of the families and so on so that was the first thing but well, that was the choice uh, of these in this uh, public policy, and we have to, we had to to deal with that. Uh, um, probably the second thing that we've met uh, at, at the at, at the first at the first glance was that we um, we we were confronted with um, uh, an administrative policy which made the uh, Ministry of Finance the, uh, the, the, the interlocutor of the, uh, of the families and that probably um, talking on about social policies, about uh, very sensitive uh, problems like that of the child care allowance, um, we had to understand how the, the Minister of Finance work and uh, why it was the only interlocutors, what, what we, we at, the first, at the first glance um, understood that it was the only interlocutor of the, um, of the families. And uh, then um, the, uh, the problem we met was um, how uh, they all these um, administrative mechanisms were um, um, were so long uh, to um, undo, in fact, and um, how the, the 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 safeguards uh, which could have work. I mean, in the legislative branch. Uh, and in the administrative branch didn't work. 
so um, and at last, why justice and the or the judiciary wouldn't uh, uh, wouldn't uh, be uh, have been able to stop uh, or to say what was wrong? So that was, of course, the first question we had to very practical one. And then we had to go further and understand uh, how it works. And we tried because there was no uh, reporter coming from ne Netherlands and uh, to understand exactly what was wrong. First, what we what we met, the first thing I said about the, the very complex legislation, that um, probably that uh, when you implement uh, when you implement a, a public policy, the first one, uh, the first people that are supposed to, to understand that something is wrong is probably the administration itself. And um, we noticed that uh, there had been some uh, difficulties that were that were uh, noted noticed, and that uh, but it didn't went up to the level where these difficulties could have been worked on and could have been raised on the second level, which is the political one. And uh, we we that's why we say that probably inside the administration there is a sort of well we'll say difficulty to to um, write and to say up to the political level that something is wrong and probably we have to know why. Uh, what was wrong, and secondly, what we can make as propositions to make it work better inside inside the mechanisms that were that were uh, that were in the law. So that's the first that the first thing. The second one is um, why um, and why the justice, especially because you have in the Netherlands all mechanisms that can that allow somebody to go to justice to go to the judiciary and ask for uh, its uh, situation to be reviewed and uh, some sort of solution uh, being brought brought by uh, being brought by the judiciary and then by the administration of course and um, well what we what we what we um, what we saw is that the probably the difficulties were uh, known, but the this is a problem of the interpretation of the law by the judiciary, even in the civil judiciary, as in the administrative one, and we saw that up to the Council of State. Um, which is a, a well-known um, uh, jurisdiction and uh, where generally uh, people do find the solution when there is wrong, something wrong in the legislation, a sort of what we call abuse of power or something like that. But in, in that, in that uh, circumstances, um, nothing happened before 21. So um, we well, you know, we um, insist on uh, the the reason. Uh, well, in our eyes, uh, why it took so long, and probably it took so long because um, first the uh, the interpretation of the law was not unanimous. Some thought that it was perfect. There was no hardship clause, of course, but uh, the, 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 the law was very clear and it was a choice from the legislator uh, not to make any hardship clause and uh, not to, um, uh, not to, um, uh, to take distance with what we call the um, uh, all of, uh, um, excuse me, 100% um, uh, uh, for the reimbursement. Um, 
all of all or nothing to 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 uh, to take in charge so that was it it was astonishing uh, perhaps for uh, for our eyes but as i said we are not netherlands natives so this interpretation we didn't have to uh, to say it was uh, uh, well interpreted or, or not what we found that there was um, contradiction in the judiciary uh, in, uh, the judiciary itself about this interpretation and uh, it's only well as you say the in, in fact at the end the council of state that say that it was of course probably the not uh, of, um, not the um, the well founded interpretation that was done but then um, we had to understand why it took so long as i said and we thought we thought that uh, perhaps in other countries there would have been somebody in the judiciary that would have raised the question of proportionality but it is and uh, well um, i think i can talk a little bit about that this is probably one of the main difficulty for the judiciary even if it is not, and especially if it is not a constitutional uh, jurisdiction that uh, has to to uh, to say its word about that, the proportionality, you know, the balance, the balance you have to make to make um, uh, between two 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 rights, in fact, and well, we we thought that we could uh, go on and elaborate on this uh, difficulty because in Netherlands there is. A proportionality review in the judiciary that couldn't be made within the judiciary and even in the Council of State. So because you have then to interpret the uh, European uh, legislation and uh, especially the Euro European the, um, jurisprudence and case law and that that is generally uh, not a problem in Netherlands. So it must have been a real difficulty that normal jurisdiction couldn't do by itself without uh, a strong incentive from the upper level of the, the judiciary. And that's why, uh, that's why we are talking about something which probably has to be done about the um, um, uh, constitutional review of the laws, we know that it's not possible uh, when you see the when you read the when we you read the, the constitution. There's no provision about that. Even there is a provision that uh, um, uh, that uh, uh, that didn't does not permit that. But in fact, probably it could be uh, the good uh, example to just to go on and um, rethink or think differently about some sort of constitutional review and it doesn't belong to the venice commission to to elaborate more on that point but the last one uh, the last point we raised um, and we were on the tiptoes saying that was about the um, the parliamentary scrutiny and uh, because generally when there is a problem like that, the, this one of the allowance, which was a huge problem, well, some, some, some talks talk about a scandal, um, we, we noticed that the, um, the reaction from the legislative uh, authority, from the, from the parliament itself, was uh, quite um, uh, long to appear. And so we thought to we, we thought that it would be interesting to look at the way um, the Parliament scrutinizes uh, not only the legislation because the Parliament makes the legislation, but the implementation and how we get information from the administration, or and what are the powers of the Parliament as. The parliament uh, as a body, but also um, uh, the, what were the powers of the MPs themselves, uh, especially, well, 
whether they are uh, in in the in the opposition or in the majority and that's why we made some uh, propositions about uh, reviewing um, the rules of procedure probably to facilitate um, to facilitate this this uh, scrutiny and but if you facilitate the scrutiny, you have also to be sure that the administration and, and the government gives you back the information uh, the, the, the parliament has to have. And uh, because he, the parliament itself, is responsible as well for the, the implementation at the end because of the political responsibility and so on. So you see, we... we, we try to get many doors open, uh, but we try to open these doors and it's not to the Venice Commission to say what has to be done, but uh, just what are the main doors uh, in our eyes that could be opened. Well, thank you so much for this, this introduction. And I can say that your uh, advice uh, has been read by uh, many uh, of us in the Netherlands, but also we had another meeting this morning with uh, the vice chair of the Council of State, with the ombudsman, uh, with the uh, president of the High Court, uh, and with the uh, uh, president of the uh, of the the chair of the um, uh, Human Rights uh, uh, Institute. And all of them mentioned the uh, the report of the Venice Commission. So uh, I think it's it's really in the heart of what we're talking about um, uh, now. Um, I want to see if uh, members of the committee do have any questions uh, to you. And um, I have to see. Uh, I hope I can see all the hands that's being raised uh, online. I see uh, Mrs. Karimi with a question. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you for the report, first of all, and also for your uh, elaboration. It, uh, uh, it is very, uh, very fa fantastic work that you have done. So thank you for that. Um, actually, one sentence in your report uh, is very interesting to me, where you say that the Venice Commission's proposal are not only based on standards, but also on comparative exper uh, experience and common sense. Several of the proposals made in this opinion could be useful in most other countries too. So that makes it a kind of general, actually, uh, your recommendations kind of general recommendations. And my question is, what is the specific one, the one that you say after actually studying this case, we think that is what that has to be, that must uh, be addressed. Is that the issue of proportionality, that the judiciary are not allowed actually to, uh, to make a decision on that themselves? Is that the issue of constitutional actually uh, review? What is the one that you would say in this case is very specific uh, for the for the case in uh, in the Netherlands? And um, when 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 because, because indeed some of the recommendations could be read as a kind of general recommendations. And what I am really looking for is what is the specific one uh, for the case that you uh, you studied. So thank you very much. Thank you, Mrs. Basie. Um, that's uh, that's uh, uh, tricky as a, as a question because uh, um, I mean, well, perhaps I can talk uh, um, from from my own experience, and um, um, I would say when we're talking, as I said, we were talking about a public policy, and um, I mean. Probably the um, the main thing, you know, proportionality. Of course, you can have this problem of proportionality, but I mean that probably um, it's all along the process 
and I mean, probably I wouldn't uh, answer exactly what, what, what you're talking, what you, you want me to say, but um, I mean, it's probably all along the process. I mean, it, will, it is in my eyes now as, as, as an individual, and as I said, from my experience, it is the whole process of um, safeguards for the quality of leg legislation. Because in fact, um, all the um, uh, uh, share takers of, of the, the, um, uh, the stakeholders were at every moment, uh, they have uh, probably, uh, they, met, they met difficulties. And um, it is all along the process. You, as I said, you can have choices, but you have to make sure that the legislation, if it has shortcomings or it if uh, raises difficulties, even some political difficulties, they have to be, um, they have to be just uh, uh, pointed. Uh, and there must be a whole process inside the administration, inside the, when, I, when I'm talking about administration, I'm talking also about government, and um, even inside the, uh, the parliament. And that sort of dialogue between the parliament, which, uh, um, who makes, I'd say who, who makes the law um, and the administration, implements the law that have probably to be and so not not rethought but and how to to it deserves a real survey so i i understand that i don't exactly uh, I, I don't exactly answer to your question but you know that in that sense you'll see that there is a problem of proportionality a hardship close if you don't choose to make any hardship close it is well, it, well, it's a choice, but then you have to know what are the consequences of the fact that you don't have any hardship clause. And it means that when you make the impact study, when you make the, the review before making a legislation, you have to know what are the effects of all these, what could be called after shortcomings. But then it is of course, also of the parliamentary. And once you have decided where are these shortcomings and what, what all the steps, everybody from the civil service, then to in the, in the, in the government, and especially in the parliament, in this dialogue um, from the elaboration of the law, then to the, to the, um, uh, to, uh, the scrutiny of what happens. I mean, it's, it's sort of global um, global problem, and that's why I wouldn't say exactly this. This is very important, and another one is important. Everything is important, and I mean it is not what well, I could say that, but uh, it is not to the judiciary to make the law instead of the parliament. So, well, you know, probably uh, they are bold, and probably they are not. And uh, at sometimes they are bold and sometimes they are not. But it's not to the judiciary. They could, of course, interpret the law and they have to interpret the law in the way they have to do it. That's not even to introduce some sort of proportionality review. But uh, at the last step, it is anyhow to the parliament to make, uh, it belongs to the parliament to make the law. Excuse me, I'm not, not answering. <laughs> okay, thank you, thank you. Uh, Joris Bakker has a question. Yes, thank you very much uh, for the effort. It is extremely interesting for us to have someone outside looking inside our system uh, and there are differences, but uh, a lot of our history is French law. So mm -hmm. some points of recognition yeah. that you uh, that you encounter um, on on the point of the uh, complex mechanism that you raised um, makes me think of the expression by your compatriot Tocqueville, who said, "Don't start a dangerous enterprise." <laughs> and 
this is probably a dangerous enterprise in a too complex setting. And I would argue that if, if a legislator decides to take that course of action, it is up to the judiciary to be more vigilant in applying proportionality on treaty law, uh, based on treaty law. And I believe that that would be a, a, a way to solve an issue that even when in legislation, there is no hardship clause. If there is no hardship clause, there should be proportionality anyway in another, as a general principle of law. And I, I slightly disagree that the judiciary is not making law, no, but it is finding law sometimes. How, how do, would you uh, react on that comment, that observation? Thank you. <laughs> I would answer. Uh, uh, I would answer uh, exactly the same thing that uh, said uh, our eminent professor of law, who was a member of the, the Constitutional Council in France, Georges Vedel. He said um, the legislator has the pencil; uh, we have only the eraser. And uh, I mean, it's quite wise. It's quite wise. Um, I really, um, you know, probably they, they, they are two, two things to, 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 to some, uh, to, to, uh, uh, to, two thoughts. First, um, the judiciary is bold when it, it is asked to be bold. And in some countries, I'm not talking about the Netherlands and, you know, I don't know exactly, judiciary must not be bold first. And second, proportionality, uh, it depends on what you're talking. For instance, uh, I can say an example, there are uh, countries, France, but not only in France, where the state cannot ask uh, a family to reimburse taxes, allowances, and so on, up than a certain level, and this level depends on the level of income. This is some sort of proportionality, but even that has to be written in the legislation. You can, of course, sometimes uh, there is a jurisdiction that can say, no, you cannot reimburse such an amount about taxes, allowances, and so on, because, well, you haven't got any revenue to, to, to pay that. So, well, it could happen once, but it couldn't happen a hundred times. And probably that's where the, our proposition in the opinion is. Uh, the judiciary could also, even if it's not bold enough to say, to scratch a law and say, well, you know, it's just uh, uh, non, uh, just unjust and uh, you have, uh, you, um, we must not uh, implement this law, but it could have some sort of uh, review being made Sometimes it happens every year, uh, or uh, it uh, many in many levels, local levels with the jurisdiction, the, your sorry, jurisdiction um, in some local levels or at the national level to see. We have um, we've seen many many problems with that law. So please look at this law and help us to have a solution. So you know there are many ways. But I think, well, we, the judiciary is not the legislator, in fact. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I see no other hands at this moment. I, uh, in, oh, I see some hands. Um, oh, this is still Joris and Farah for another question. Jeroen, Rekor first. Jeroen. Thank you. Yeah, my question is the following. Um, the Venice Commissie also promotes a more firm debate between the high institutes uh, uh, of state. Um, and that's a, that's a good suggestion. But how do you prevent in that process that the vulnerable uh, judiciary get damaged by too bold uh, attacks? And it, it, it's, it's hard for a judge to defend him or herself. Sorry, I, um, 
Um, well, um, judiciary, I'm, I, I'm, I'm not sure I have uh, an answer from the Venice Commission. I mean, it happens that uh, the the, um, the 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 decisions, the judicial decisions, are not uh, are not uh, um, found as uh, um, equitable or things like that. But you know, well, it happens, and uh, it's all the the the, um, uh, the process within the judiciary that goes back from, that goes from the from the from the first level. From the juge d'instance and then go to the Supreme Court uh, or to the Council of State. But if there's no appeal, if there's not uh, advocates to go on cassation and so on, well, things are uh, like they are. Now decisions are definitive, and uh, so that's why the 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 uh, dialogue. Uh, even inside the judiciary is very important and uh, that's why making some sort of reviews um, e even even oral ones are very important and that's why also the roles of the advocates is very important but uh, you know the, the, every path is it could be a very narrow one because advocates would enter a path if they if somebody asked them to to go into this path and sometimes you know that when talking about social policies it's sometimes very difficult to find people because they're just they're just uh, afraid of uh, of going through the judiciary and so on they say just okay uh, um, it's terrible but and so on uh, well, um, and otherwise, um, the, the, there's there's no sanction uh, for the for the judiciary, especially because there's there's of course a responsibility, but uh, they are not. Uh, um, it's just a question that in that case, especially, there was no consensus about exactly what meant the. Uh, not uh, probably the provision. I don't know because in uh, I, I, I do not speak uh, um, uh, Flemish, so, so I don't know. But uh, there was probably a way to uh, some something to to to, uh, um, to to be to be read differently. But it's not a professional. Uh, a, a professional uh, fault of the of the of the judiciary. Uh, it's something which was a question that was on the table and uh, um, there, there, there was, n there is, for me, there's no way uh, for uh, responsibility of uh, judges in that, uh, in, in that uh, problem. But I don't know whether I have uh, answered to, to your question exactly. Uh, Thank you. Um, well, I think maybe, but uh, uh, the question was also not only on on the case level, but also more in general. When the, the you said that um, both within the administration as between the uh, the powers uh, um, that you the signals should come mm -hmm. uh, to the surface and it should be discussed. And I understand the question from Jeroen de Koor also. Well, how can you um, enable such a dialogue, um, but also with with keeping the balance between the powers? Uh, mm -hmm. uh, is it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, first um, experience. Then uh, the best thing when you have. Uh, um, and, and in in that case, and the when when I when I answer to other questions, exactly the same. I, you know, we are not uh, we are not um, uh, from Netherlands, so we don't know exactly what happened. We had the impression that probably um, implementing such a legislation, probably also, of course, in in, in the social uh, sphere, it's it's more more difficult than in others, but anyhow. There must have been, after the, the vote uh, uh, in the parliament, there must have been instructions, very precise, that give to 
the uh, ministries and to the um, and and to the civil servants and so uh, exact. It's never possible to uh, to 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 answer to every question that is a, that that's going to be done, but to go v in very precisely in what everyone on during all this process has to do and has to be aware of and how you take care of the people who are the beneficiary of the um, of of the allowance when talking with allowance because instructions could be then the uh, the way when you are looking at what was wrong exactly the the different steps it shortens the time for the inquiry you said that step has to be done and then another one and the one and where where um uh, where didn't it work um th this is and then probably there must be also a sort of signal well all, all, all what i'm saying because I, I i i thought at the moment and i think right now as well that it was a very complex mechanism in a very sensitive um uh, sphere so uh, you you when you implement such a policy you could have the uh, the the time to write things what how you feel them how you think it has to be done and then to um, and, and and then to make sure that somebody inside the uh, the, the the service inside the the ministry has an eye on what's going on and make the uh, the scrutiny sort of permanent scrutiny available just because it was and it is in that uh, it, it was and i'm talking about such a policy and i will say another time it was a complex mechanisms i know that it happened in other fields but they were not so sensitive probably and uh, you 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 must invent at the moment the way the uh, you could go on scrutinizing what's going on that's why we say we say um we could have some sort of ex experience you know making a sort of geographical or any, anything that could see how it works how it works in practice and having somebody inside the administration who has to look at the way uh, the way it works because the servant you know he has uh, somebody above him uh, above himself who has somebody above himself so on and it goes up and down if you don't have somebody which is aside which is beside and can look, even if it is inside the ministry but with, which has its own responsibility that's what we that's why we we were talking about inspectors or, or some sort of uh, um, reviewer, permanent reviewer, who has just to look at what's going on, and be then the having then the ability to uh, to answer to the minister, whose responsibility is uh, is on the table, and to the parliament uh, if there is a scrutiny, and even sometimes to the judiciary, to just to to make them understand how it works. So. Well, that sort of, uh, you know, every people is scrutinizing some, somebody else, in fact. But uh, um, the, the, the hierarchy um, is uh, quite a good thing, but uh, you have to have good instructions and uh, it's not sufficient. Thank you. Uh, before I close, I have I've one question myself or, or a remark. You also uh, in your report, uh, the Venice Commission also goes into the uh, well, the, the parliamentary situation in the Netherlands that the uh, a strong uh, majority versus opposition um, mm. uh, way of doing things, and which can lead to the situation that uh, the yeah, MPs from the majority always vote for legislation uh, because they're from their parties 
and you say something well that, that it's um uh, that this MPs party also uh, yeah should it should be accepted that MPs from government parties also represent parliament as an institution and mm -hmm. that participation in parliamentary scrutiny of the government is not an act of disloyalty Um, and I think that's a very important part of, of what's going on. Mm -hmm. And the question is how to get there. Uh, well, I think we can talk an hour about it. But, but my question also about, for example, scrutiny on implementations. Do you have any suggestions for us, for countries where they are a step further in finding a solution on these topics? Well... I wouldn't, I wouldn't say there are models, but I think there are. And uh, I mean, the, 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 there are possibilities. In fact, well, about the majority, I mean, everywhere when MPs from the majority didn't, doesn't, work, doesn't vote or wants to be very tough with the ministry, it's always difficult. But uh, we were, we were uh, said, and, and probably because it was not only one voice, but many voices said, there is a strong culture in the, uh, in the Netherlands of the majority being, um, uh, well, uh, considering that it has not to say to the government, uh, there's something wrong in, in, in what you're doing. So, well, but... Well, I, I can't say there are, mo there are mo models that we, we are, um, I'll say that there are examples in our, in our opinion. Uh, and it's, of course, well, I will say about France because I know the rules of procedure of the parliament. And uh, we had many, many possibilities, even for very small groups to ask. Oh, well, it, it's not uh, uh, whenever they want and so on, but the rules of procedure say exactly what uh, what happened i mean in germany as well and so you know we i mean it's just uh, um, i think there is something which is very important and uh, that's one of the my, my um, uh, permanent uh, permanent uh, say about the venice commission uh, we are aware of uh, the the weight of culture and history and especially political culture but also legal culture so it could be very difficult to point uh, to point out uh, what is exactly the shortcoming but uh, it uh, it has to be raised and um, this point of, of scrutiny when we when we were reading these uh, rules of procedure we saw that uh, the possibility for the opposition or for small groups or even for one MP to, um, how do you say in, in, in English, as in France, interpeller, interpolate, mm -hmm. I don't know, is it, it's well, the government and, uh, or even the, um, the majority whip uh, to say, well, uh, there is something wrong, could be very difficult. That's the only thing we say. But there are parliaments, and we quoted some of them in the in in the opinion, where it seems it's more easy. Okay. Well, I think we come to the uh, close of this meeting. I want to thank you uh, again very much for sharing your thoughts with us, and uh, I'm sure we will use um, uh, your insights uh, and more specific uh, the report of the Venice Commission in our debate. Thank you very much. Thank you very much because the the parliament itself asked the Venice Commission to go to <laughs> profoundly in this uh, in this question. So it was, as I said, very interesting. So I must say thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you very much.